Rolls-Royce, the pinnacle of automotive luxury and ingenuity. Founded in 1904, it was the brainchild of Charles Stuart Rolls and Henry Royce with a philosophy, take the best that exists and make it better. That philosophy would birth none other than the Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost. It was an early 20th century Rolls Royce that would be the father for many Rolls Royces to come after it. Ladies and gentlemen, this car should be remembered for being one of the most influential cars in history. Join me as we talk about this unknown marvel and make its story known. This is the story of the Silver Ghost. The United Kingdom was undergoing the transition into the 20th century. By this time, we had the creation of the Benz Patent Motor Wagon in 1886. New automobile companies throughout the world would follow suit and attempt to establish themselves. In 1904, Charles Rolls and Henry Royce, who knew each other during the rise of automobiles, set out the plan for the first car bearing the Rolls-Royce name. The very first Rolls Royce car was known as the 10 HP. It was produced from 1904 to 1906. The 10 HP was introduced as a twin cylinder engine car. It later came in two variants. The first variant was the 15 HP, which came with a three cylinder engine, and the 20 HP, which had a four cylinder engine. It was engineered by Henry Royce and was marketed by Charles Rolls. In 1905, the 20 HP variant came in second place in the International Taurus Trophy Race, and then the next year, it went on to win the whole entire thing. The duel was just getting started, and after the 10 HP's run, plans for a new touring car was in place. And since it was the start of the 20th century, it would be this development that would put Rolls Royce in the automotive history books for years to come. In 1906, a new company known as Rolls-Royce Limited was formed. The development of what the press would call at the time the best car in the world was made with ambition to create such a machine. The name of the chassis for this car is 40 over 50 HP. The first chassis was made in Manchester, England. Then it was moved to Derby. Rolls-Royce set off to make the best car in the world. Automobiles at the time were running through motor stuff. Many of the cars were rough noisy and unreliable. So Henry Royce decided he wanted to replace that. He wanted something more reliable, smoother, and quieter. Rolls Royce decided to make a car that does not make any noise. And to do that, you must produce a different powertrain. The ambiguous company decided to make a massive main bearing crankshaft and stiff crankcase. Its cylinders was cast in two blocks of three, inclusive of heads, which pretty much eliminated head gaskets and the chances of them blowing. The car also included a full pressure lubrication system, an electrical system, and a precision carburetor. It had 48 brake horsepower and had a top speed of 60 miles per hour. It also had a 7.4 liter engine and a four speed transmission. It was made in rear wheel drive layout. It set the standard for many Rolls Royces to follow after it and this will lead to the name of the Silver Ghost due to the quietness of the ride. The philosophy of taking the best and making it better was a moniker that this car produced. Now Rolls Royce was ready to show their beautiful artwork for the world. The car will make its debut in the 1906 Olympia Motor Show. After the Silver Ghost debuted at the Olympia Motor Show in 1906, the car will be released to the public in 1907. It will go on to be one of the longest single model cars next to the Ford Model T, Austin Mini, the Trabant, and the Volkswagen Beetle. At the time, it was one of the most desirable cars in the pre-1930s era. In 1907, to showcase the reliability of the then new Silver Ghost, Rolls Royce decided to test it. Being observed by the Royal Automotive Club, the car went on a 15,000 mile trial. It will go on to have success and four years later, it will go on another trial on the London Edinburgh London run. It ran the entire distance in top gear with a fuel consumption of 24.32 miles imperial gallon. 
which is equivalent to 19 miles per gallon in the United States. It was truly an amazing moment and outstanding performance for a car for its size. The car will undergo different changes as well. In 1909, the car, which originally had a four-speed transmission, was then replaced by a three-speed transmission unit. During the London Edinburgh run, the carburetion increased the brake's horsepower to 58 horsepower, and in 1913, when the Cavalier rear suspension was made, it went back to the four-speed transmission. There was total 7,874 silver ghosts made in the years of 1907 to 1926. There will be different trims such as roasters as well as a tour version. The same silver ghost chassis, however, will be used in two of the biggest events in world history. World War I broke out in Europe from 1914 to 1918. The war was truly a different type of war as countries involved would be in conflict with one another. Many automotive manufacturers would go on to develop weapons and military transport for the war effort. This will definitely include Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce decided to use the chassis of the Silver Ghost, which would then lead to the development of the Rolls-Royce armor car. There was only 120 built, but their impact lasts a lifetime. It came with a six-cylinder petrol water-cooled engine. It also came with 80 horsepower and a top speed of 40 miles per hour but it was all that was needed for the war effort. Plus, it also weighs 19 ton. For the suspension portion of the car, it was by four by two, which included double rear wheels. During World War I, the Royal Navy Air Service were the first to receive the chassis of the car. Then, the Admiralty Air Department would then design the armor portion for the remainder as well as the rotating turret gun. The turret, which was also water cool, was a .303 inch MK1 Vickers machine gun. The Rolls Royce armored car would then go on to serve in the Western Front and the Middle Eastern Theater. The well-known T.E. Lawrence, also widely known as Lawrence of Arabia, also saw the armored car in action. He has quoted by saying this about the armored car being more valuable than rubies. The car went on to help Lawrence and win his battle known as the Revolt in the Desert. The impact actually left an impression on him as he is quoted by saying, I should like all my Rolls Royces with enough tires and petrol to last me all my life. By 1917, Rolls Royce decided to focus on aero engines, thus the production of the armored car will be suspended. In 1920 and 1924, the car will undergo a huge update for the time. In 1922, the Irish Civil War broke out between the Irish Free State and the Irish Republican Army. The British decided to send 13 Rolls Royces to help assist the Irish Free State in battle. The armored cars were proving very vital as they were used to fight in the streets as well as guerrilla warfare attacks from the Irish Republican Army. It also aided the Irish in retaking Cork and Waterford. They will be in continued usage in Ireland until 1944. They will receive both the 1920 variant as well as the 1924 variant in which both of them have different camouflage schemes which will aid in of course hidden detection. The Armour Corps provided service to other countries such as Egypt and Africa. Now, three armor cars were used in World War I, 13 was used during the Irish Civil War. What about the others? Well, when World War II broke out, 76 Rolls Royce armor cars were made for the war. They saw warfare in the Western Desert and Syria. They were doing the exact same thing that they were doing in World War I, providing a good service for the country. However, the main uses had died down as they were retired in 1941. They have finished their service. They have served the British public well. After the war, many cars were stripped and sold. They are a testament to the ingenuity set by Charles Rolls and Henry Royce. Since this is Memorial Day weekend, we want to also honor those who passed on during the time of service. 
whether it's World War One, World War Two, Vietnam, Iraq, we want to let you know that we salute you and we want to thank you for your service. Because without you, this video will not be possible. May those who have passed on in those wars rest in peace. You are not forgotten. Back on the home front, Rolls Royce decided to produce the Silver Ghost in the United States. The development of the car was produced in Springfield, Massachusetts. Coming to the United States during the Roaring Twenties, Rolls Royce hopes to gain more customers from the international market. In 1925, Rolls Royce finally gave the 40 by 50 the name of Silver Ghost, which was dubbed earlier by the press. The factory in Springfield made a total of almost 3,000 cars before the production ceased in 1931. By that time, the world was going through the Great Depression, and the car was well over its time. It was seen at the time as outdated. Just like the armored car, Rolls Royce Silver Ghost did its duty and paved the way for cars such as the Rolls Royce Phantom, which will take up the mantle in the late 1920s. The Silver Ghost is one of the most legendary automobiles of the 20th century. It provided owners a sense of luxury and comfort. It was very reliable and well built, and it set many standards and traditions for many luxury automobiles after it. It established Rolls Royce as a household name. Nowadays, to find this beautiful car, you need well over 600,000 US dollars. But it's still an honor to do a video on something I more likely will not more likely see in my lifetime. And of course, it served in the war with this chassis. And with all these factors, this is the reason why the 1907 to 1926 Rolls Royce Silver Ghost is one of the legendary cars of history. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.